Britain is facing an ever more acute HRT supply crisis. Hormone replacement therapy relieves symptoms women face during the menopause. But now the drug is so scarce, the government has had to step in to start rationing it. Women across the country have been left suicidal and resorting to extremes to access the drug, sometimes paying nine times the price for it on the black market. Well, TV personality Penny Lancaster, who is also an ITV presenter, has been campaigning for women to get better access to the drug after suffering with her own pretty galling experiences of the menopause. Her husband, the rock star Rod Stewart, has been by her side helping her spread the message. And Penny now joins me live from Dublin. Penny, good evening. Good evening, Tom. You were chortling away there, I heard, when uh, Piers was, uh, I think, gently ribbing uh, Lorraine Kenny, certainly enjoying her misery at Boris Johnson's expense. You, welcome to have your say now, or we could move straight on to a far more interesting interview. <laughs> I think best we move on. I love Lorraine. Good. We so, indeed, so do we all, so does Piers, really. Look, I want to talk to you about uh, a lot of work you're doing at the moment on HRT. Can I first ask you, though, when did you first start suffering menopause symptoms, and what were they like for you? Um, it was probably um, about a couple of years ago, almost um, at the point of the first lockdown. And my my first thoughts was that I was I had the virus because of the the amount of of heat. Uh, I thought it was heat exhaustion because we were in Florida at the time. And then I thought, well, this must be the virus because the main symptoms for the virus for COVID was was a high temperature. Um, but then I shortly realised that it didn't really match with, with the symptoms because it wasn't, I didn't have a continuous cough and, and the, the temperature would fluctuate. So the worst part for me was that it was at night and, and it wasn't just feeling hot. It was as if the bed was on fire and um, it woke me um, in, in a puddle of, of sweat, literally. Um, on, and then I found myself on top of the covers to cool down, falling back to sleep and then waking up freezing cold. So this whole pattern of being under and on top of the covers, trying to regulate my temperature, um, began to, to cause a problem because of course, sleep deprivation is, is um, as any woman um, with children, young children will, will understand that, um, that can be quite torturous. So therefore during the day, the brain fog came, um, not having slept well, and, and then just tremendous amount of anxiety. And uh, it wasn't until our lovely loose ladies um, on, on the panel um, advised me that Penny, the symptoms you're describing, it's menopause, because the doctor that I went to prescribed antidepressants, which didn't work. And is the worst thing, obviously, to go on. Um, it, and it, like you mentioned, it can cause devastating effects if you're not given the right treatment. And Penny, I understand you had very powerful mood swings as well. At one point, you threw Rod's dinner across the room at him. Uh, yes, <clears throat> that was probably my my worst moment. It was it was one of those, um, you know, we've got to get your mum to the doctor. Um, something's not right because I'm a very easygoing, um, laid back, uh, take everything in my stride, and. I want everyone around me to kind of be happy. I, you know, like a lot of mums, we kind of balance everything around us and everyone's um, thoughts and feelings come first before our own. And this particular time, the, the kids weren't coming down for their dinner. And when they did finally come into the room, they were arguing and I just snapped. It was, it was just completely out of the blue, out of character. And I screamed and threw the plates across the floor. Um, the dogs couldn't eat the, even eat the dinner because the plates were all cracked and smashed. I mean, it was, it was hideous. And I just crumbled to the floor, crying my eyes out and, and ran out into the garden and called one of my best girlfriends that I knew was, was sort of struggling with similar symptoms. Um, it's devastating. And, and, you know, my husband and my children were at loss. You know, what can we do to help? And, and I didn't know how to help myself. So where, how are they going to help? Obviously, HIT was hugely useful for you. You know from painful personal experience, therefore, how much menopause women really need this. What, in your view, has gone wrong here with the supply, and who do you think is to blame? Well, I think um, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those things, it, it, you know, does the chicken come before the egg? The demand for HRT, uh, the confidence women now have after a lot of campaigning after the last two or three years, um, when we're not sort of shying away from it. We're not embarrassed to talk about it. We're, we're, um, we're brave enough to go to the doctors and demand we need HRT. Um, 
there should be like this tick box of a very, very simple um, symptoms that you just need to tick at a doctor for them to for finally go, okay, I'll sign, I sign your prescription, here's the HRT. Um, because it is really, really devastating. And because of this huge demand now, the pharmacists and manufacturers, they just can't keep up with, with the demand of, of the medication that we need. So I, I think the message has got out and it's full steam ahead and let's hope that, um, women can get their hands on it. And more importantly, not have to pay for it. They don't in Scotland and Wales. So we need to, we need to move on with this. Penny, one of the really interesting things about this debate, uh, pioneered by you, is that this is no longer a taboo subject. Perhaps it was a month ago, but there's been so much talked about now. You know, men talk about it, I'm talking about it. I bother to ask my wife, you know, how she's finished, she's going through the menopause, all this sort of stuff. Rod, your husband, has been by your side throughout all of this, exemplary fashion. How has he been supporting you? Um, well, that, that's great you're supporting your wife as well. And I think it's so important, especially in the early stages, because a lot of women will find excuses. You know, we normally do. Oh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take some paracetamol or it, it will go. I'll be fine. I'll, I'll take a rest. And, you know, you always um, put other people first. And I think when it does escalate to the point where you feel like the world's closing in on you and, it's get, and the, your, your world is getting darker and darker, sometimes it does come to the point where the men around you or close family members are those that can recognize the symptoms and um, you know help, help trying to get you the right help so it's wonderful that you're supporting your wife and and like my husband is as well um, and just because we're able to have these discussions that we're having now um, I, I believe you know in my mum's day when she was going through a menopause it was a subject a taboo subject a subject certainly that men weren't comfortable talking about that's a woman's problem. Well, like we've seen, you know, relationships can break down, divorces can happen, women can lose their jobs and sadly take their own lives. So it's, it's not just a woman's problem. Finally, Penny, it has been said by some that if HRT was a drug that men needed, there'd be no shortages at all. What's your take? Um, well, I, I believe um, men can uh, get hold of Viagra for free. Um, so... Their, their hormones are being looked after and uh, women play a vital role in the workplace and so many women are having to lose their jobs and walk away from very high profile positions, you know, just where men um, and women are in that position in their career when they could be promoted and become CEOs of companies and very talented women are, are, are being lost um, in our workplace because of the lack of help and they, all they need is the HRT. We just need our hormones back so we can be productive again. All right, Penny, it's been really interesting talking to you. Um, give my best to Rod. And give my best to your wife. I hope, she, I hope she's, she's doing okay. Don't, don't tell her not to leave it too late because as soon as you feel those symptoms coming, that's when you've got to act. Don't wait.